Thank you to the witnesses. I want to ask a, a question that has sort of a Virginia tie to it. Um, China has one of the most uh, sophisticated uh, global campaigns of repression against dissidents around the world of any nation. And in particular, the FBI has warned that China is conducting a global campaign to target Uyghur human rights activists. Uh, the Uyghur community in Virginia is one of the largest in the United States, and we have a number of constituents who have been engaged in Uyghur human rights issues who have been targeted and harassed here, but also find their family members still living in the Xinjiang area uh, affected. What is the United States government, particularly the State Department, doing to make sure that the authoritarian reach of China against people living in the United States is limited? Uh, so, Senator, one of the things that we have immediately done uh, working with the FBI is to look at the police stations that uh, China is creating here and around the world. Uh, New York's uh, police station, so to speak, was closed down. These aren't police stations at all. Uh, what they are are policing uh, the diaspora, um, Uyghurs and others uh, in uh, the Chinese orbit, uh, harassing them, um, putting them at great risk. Uh, and so uh, we are working with law enforcement here very closely uh, to make sure that China cannot reach into the United States and harass and further undermine the human rights of Uyghurs, ethnic minorities, and Chinese and Chinese Americans. And the, the Chinese do actually have imprisoned a number of the family members of American residents who have advocated for Uyghur human rights. What is the U.S. government doing to try to intercede on behalf of those unjustly imprisoned in China? So in uh, the Secretary of State and I have met with all of the families or a group of the families that are quite concerned about this and concerned about their family members. And when we have met with the Chinese or communicated with the Chinese, we have raised these cases. In some instances, families don't want us to raise the cases because they're afraid it will target their family members. So we are uh, really guided by what the families want, uh, but we will try to do whatever we possibly can. Uh, and I have to tell you, meeting with those Uyghur families, just as when we meet with all of the families of those detained in China or held in exit bans in China, uh, are some of the hardest meetings uh, I have to do. Let me switch topics. The, uh, the title of today's hearing is Evaluating U.S.-China Policy in an Era of Strategic Competition. And I think we all know the competition is intense across multiple fronts, and in many areas it's more than competition. China is an adversary. And yet one of the things that we probably should do for our own good and for the good of the world is seek are there areas of cooperation, because it would benefit the world greatly if they could see as, as tough as this competition and even adversarial relationship is, there is at least enough communication to recognize on some small set of issues the need to find common cause and work together. That would be good for the United States, good for China, but it would be good for the world to see that too in terms of sending a stability message. What are areas, uh, as you, you know, stand up China House and, and run U.S.-China policy, what are areas that might be most likely to find some cooperation for the good of our countries and the good of the world? So the ones that we talk about the most, uh, starting with the one that uh, Senator Haggerty mentioned, which is counter-narcotics, uh, which is quite critical for all the reasons that he said that others uh, and that uh, Ranking Member uh, Risch raised as well. Uh, working on climate, quite frankly, we cannot meet the challenge on climate unless China is working with the rest of the world. I'm glad that they have reopened communications between their envoy and Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, John Kerry, uh, I hope that that conversation can continue even in this difficult time. Uh, we've talked about working together on global health, which may sound sort of strange given that the Chinese have been very protective of their data and genomic sequencing on COVID-19. Um, I know there's great concern up here about the origins of COVID-19, which uh, remains not resolved yet by the intelligence community. I'd, urge any briefings you might want on that uh, to have with the intelligence community. But I do think we have to work together on global health uh, because we're going to see more pandemics uh, and uh, we need to be working together in this regard. So those are three. And of course, people to people exchanges, ways that we can have uh, our folks safely 
uh, know each other in a better way because we do not seek conflict with the Chinese people. Um, we do many things um, uh, and have discovered things together in our scientific community where it's in our security interest to do so. Uh, we have to be careful, thoughtful, uh, but nonetheless, I hope that we can engage in people-to-people -people exchanges appropriately.